Ladies and gentlemen, it's Thursday night, about 6 o'clock Central Time, 7 o'clock Eastern. And I'm about to give you the inside scoop on what's going on inside Fox News here on Facebook Mentions. Now, the reason this is important is Fox has been one of the only quasi-independent media outlets that isn't basically as leftist as Mao Zedong. It's been kind of conservative light, libertarian light. And during the RNC in July of this year, there was a coup d'etat taking out Roger Ailes, who started Fox News and pioneered a lot of modern television. He actually brought women pretty much into TV the way you see them in their glorious goddess form. Now, I know the inside baseball on Ailes. I'm going to stop right there to the highest levels. And he basically rained tens of millions of dollars on these women. He was a creature of the 50s and 60s and would occasionally make comments. Uh, but the women would also play into that. Uh, the point is, though, he was taken out, not for the decades at Fox News or even before that, for what he may or may not have done. He was taken out because Rupert Murdoch has gone completely over the side to Hillary Clinton. Now, he said that a few years ago that he's for Hillary Clinton. But he was basically told in the hacking scandal with his properties in the U.K. that if he didn't get in bed with them fully and kept playing both sides, uh, that he was basically going to be shut down. Not just his licenses, but uh, that they would go after him for criminal charges for all the hacking and the rest of it that he got caught doing in Europe. And I was told about that a few years ago before it even started. Now you see the coup at Fox. they got to change that first and make it more like CNN before they move against Drudge and InfoWars and Breitbart. Now, Facebook came out today, we shot an earlier video, and said they're going to, quote, bury alt-right news as fake. It's going to be run by Snopes, which is literally funded by the Democratic Party and George Soros on record. I mean, it works for Hillary. So that's their impartial group. Uh, the Washington Post just had to retract their fake list last week because people were filing lawsuits and saying, what the hell, I'm a Russian agent, I'm fake? I'm going to be able to go to court when all this happens now and show where CNN got caught with fake news and caught admitting they were lying premeditatedly under White House and Soros and Hillary orders. And then show I'm fake news when I said there were fake polls and that Trump was going to win. Show where I said they were going to start censoring a year ago with our insiders like Drudge and Supreme Court justices. I said what happened by 2016. It's here. No, the truth is we're too dead on. The intelligence community listens, the police listen, uh, you name it. Now, I was given this information yesterday by a very high-level source, as high-level as you can get in this whole scandal, about Murdoch and the rest of it. But I don't just believe the source. I have my own sources and other intel to confirm it. Different Fox News uh, contributing women, like Megyn Kelly, were specifically herself given $6 million dollars to go after Trump and to go after Ailes and to testify that he hugged her a little too tight once. Oh, my gosh. Now, Ailes got paid out, reportedly, a uh, half of $63 million. And here's the big scoop. They're trying to get out of the $63 million, the second half to him, claiming that they're digging up more stuff on him and then, and then trying to get past his indemnity and let women go after him civilly again, despite one of the women got paid tens of millions of dollars because he supposedly told her she was cute and stuff and wanted to date her. And he also hugged a woman once when she hugged him. It was, it's, it's, it's terrible. And these women get paid tens of millions of dollars, these poor babies. Uh, so all of this is going on right now, and this is a coup inside Fox News. You know, Bill Clinton can rape women. He can be on the, the pedophile Lolita Express of Jeffrey Epstein. All that's okay. There can be all this weird crap in the in the WikiLeaks about kids and hot tubs and sixty five thousand dollars in succulent hot dogs for the president and you know is the is the walnut sauce going to be well behaved? Oh yeah, the, the, you know, the walnut sauce is you know can be precocious, but don't worry, it'll be in the hot tub waiting. So all of this weirdness is going on, but don't worry, we're going to go after the real devil, Roger Ailes. Look, I don't want a job at Rod, with, with Roger Ailes. I don't want a job at Fox News. I was offered three different pilot shows on there and wouldn't go to be on them. Just ask Eric Muller, a man, Cal Muller. You know, he's done shows on Fox. He had a, uh, several of these on there where they wanted me to co-host, and I said, no, I'm not doing it. Okay, I've hosted, uh, what is it, three or four Discovery, History Channel shows, you name it. 
when they call me to host shows now, I don't even call them back. Nothing against them, but <clears throat> it gets cut into sound bites, all the rest of it. Fox News uh, analyst one time or vice president told New York Daily News that I wanted to be on Fox but failed. This is how delusional mainstream media is. They want to say that I want to be with them. I have a platform that hour for hour has more viewers and listeners on AM, FM, satellite, uh, internet. I mean, we've had some weeks 85 million viewers. The average is like 40 million. That's confirmed. So let's get this straight. I built my own thing. I don't want to be the establishment. I'm a trailblazer. I'm an innovator. I'm not here kissing the ass of Roger Ailes, who's already out of power and who's already gone. If I wanted to be at Fox, I'd be towing the line for Rupert Murdoch and saying how great Hillary was. Because every time I've mentioned just some of this, now I have the whole inside story. Some of it's so incredible, I'm not even going to get into it. Because there could be some issues with it, people even knowing this. We could hurt some innocent people. But it's a mess there. The reason I mention all that backstory is... I'm doing this so you know about the ongoing coup. They're taking over alternative media. They're going after Breitbart Drudge. There's a kick President-elect Trump off of Twitter. That's Twitter saying that. If they can kick Alex Jones off and Trump off and start all these censors and all these gauges and all these filters, which they're announcing, they can shut anybody off. This is a major attack on free speech. I gotta say, I never thought Megan Kelly was that good looking. She's kind of just too skinny for me, but now she looks like a villain from a movie and is so hateful on such a power trip and so biased against America. She's sick. So she can't admit she's a full blown anti American globalist, fake liberal. So she acts like she's a conservative but keeps sniping at Trump, and that's why her ratings are down. She says people hate her because of Trump. No, people hate you because you're an establishment tart. So I just wanna get this out there to everybody, okay? Ailes was crucified because he wouldn't sell out the country and go along with the New World Order. And I hope Ailes launches another network or something. I know he's had some health problems, just gotten over those. And a lot of other things are happening, but this is just truly disgusting that all this is taking place. And this is the type of garbage that's happening. It was uh, David Brock and Media Matters four years ago in Politico said, we're going to infiltrate Fox and other independent media. We're going to overthrow it. We're going to sabotage them from within. And that's what they're doing. And Rupert Murdoch and his sons are globalists, New World Order, all the way. They only ran Fox to control the conservative movement. And now that it's broken free from them, they're trying to destroy it. And conservatives aren't perfect, but we... In the libertarian movement, the nationalist movement took over the Republican Party. That's why the Democrats and Republicans went and financed Jill Stein and and Gary Johnson, all these other movements, was to try to sabotage it. But it's not happening. We're aware of it. Trump isn't perfect, but he's a nationalist. He wants prosperity. That's why the globalists hate him. So now you've got the inside baseball, the inside scoop on what's going on, and they're trying to go after Ailes and other people to completely destroy him so that they can just continue to remove the legacy of anything good at Fox News. They're threatening Sean Hannity. They're trying to put the screws to him. The problem is true conservatism, which Hannity doesn't quite do, but he goes closer than anybody else, is so popular, it's the ratings. Look at somebody who I know is good, Tucker Carlson, who reached out to me, wanted to meet in Austin a few years ago, been out to dinner with him a few times, hung out. I know he knows what's going on. His dad was a patriot back when Voice of America still did some good. And he likes to come on. Well, they told him, don't go on Alex Jones anymore. And And that wasn't... In confidence, but that was, you know, he said, I like the show, sorry, not allowed to come on anymore. He's got a primetime 7 o'clock Central show, and he's promoting freedom, and so it's super popular. Proving Ailes kind of wrong. We don't want to just look at pieces of ass up there that push, you know, garbage lines. There are a lot of smart women up there, like the one lady that's going to be the press secretary now. All right, I'm out of time uh, here. going to go see the family now. It's 6 after 6. Uh, 7 o'clock tonight, InfoWars Nightly News, a lot of powerful stuff. They're trying to censor us. They're putting in algorithms. They admit they are. They're on the news. There's a video of the crucifixion of Alex Jones on InfoWars.com where they say, quote, over and over again on CNN, you name it, it's time to shut down Alex Jones. I don't like the KKK, but they got their free speech. I don't like the new Black Panther Party, but they got their speech. Folks, I don't say any of that stuff they say, calling for violence and stuff. They're trying to shut me down. Pelosi's daughter trying to overthrow the election is saying, I'm threatening her. I need to be shut down. She's a damn liar. So they're coming after us, folks. They're coming after you because we're changing history. And I'm putting out a counter narrative that are lies. That's the truth. And they can't stand it. 
I want to do a meme or something of uh, some of these people it's, it's, it, and, and just really counter them. And, and it is because we're bringing them down that they can't compete with us. They want to shut us off. This is so classic. Infowars.com. Spread that link. You know, I want to show this one more time because it's, 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 it's really exciting. And then I'm going to go. Come check this out. We didn't lose audio, did we? I don't think so. We'll find out. Is it back? We should be good. I'm just going to turn it down to us. Okay, good. I, I, yeah, we were plugged into the good system, so we're, we had to go mobile here. You know, I want to see my kids right now. I want to eat some dinner. I want to hang out with friends that are here. But I still got other. I got to do the title of the show today and a lot more. Because if we don't fight these people, we're going to lose. You know, they launched this attack during the holidays. They didn't do it the day after the election because they knew you were awake, you were focused, you were involved. They waited till you went back to sleep. So they thought I'd gone back to sleep. Oh, I was looking forward to taking some time off. I didn't know that's going to happen. This is the 100,000... people that signed on to a petition to stop the takeover of the media. Now it's been officially announced to stop the whole fake news takeover by the fake news to shut down his competition. And this is all signed right there. And that's all going to Trump. And it's going next week. You're going to see all that. And the media said I was a liar, that this wasn't even real. This is what they just say. Everything we do isn't true. Because the truth is, Six o'clock at night, most folks have gone home. This is a real operation. You see that? That's a real newsroom right there. Researchers and people and graphics folks and, and fact checkers. You see that? This is a real studio in here where they're taping the news that's about to go live. Part of it's live, part of it's taped. You see they're still in there. Very disturbing footage and images coming from them. And again, I ask, where's the liberal media? Where are the social justice warriors? Where is President Obama? Now, other sad images we are seeing coming out of Aleppo as children are begging to be rescued in a heartbreaking video from a bombed out Syrian city. Now, let's remember, who was it that called for Assad to step down? Who was it that called for Assad to be removed from power? That was the Obama administration. That was Hillary Clinton. And now what are we seeing? Now it looks like Syria is coming back the Assad regime is taking ISIS out, and of course, this is why Assad needs to go, apparently. Assad needs to be removed from power because he's helping get ISIS out of there. Again, I'm not building up Assad as the good guy or the bad guy. I'm just trying to report on what we're seeing, but it is sad to see these kids now begging these orphans to be taken out of this city that has been bombed out. And again, I have to wonder, who is it that's calling for Assad to be removed from power? Where are those people now? And what is the Assad regime doing for Syria, uh, for the people of Syria that don't want to be violent rebels like they have in ISIS? Now, this is a story out of Yahoo. Notice that's teleprompter free. There he is, basically live taping. A lot of times we're live on as we tape. He's going like he's live. No teleprompter, just battling with intellect. Look at this guy taking over society. He thinks his AI can beat you. He thinks he can censor you. Recognition technology. Go to Watch Shot so we can actually see that robot background. Other yeah. apps. There it is. You are aware of this, but now Mark Zuckerberg envisions a. What about my pyramid? You know my pyramid graphic, the big black pyramid? Character. We ever use like this as a virtual. Oh, uh, we don't ha we have it, his we have it. We're not using it right now. now it's pretty I powerful. A certain Disney movie Good job. growing up. It was so these great folks, these people are on the current show. And basically, it's, you know, the smart house. You can pretty much Back imagine what the smart house would be like. This is 6 o'clock at night, 6.15, here we are battling a new world order. There's Trump. This is the real deal, folks. They don't like this. They don't like the fact we built it and it's got more ratings than they do. And they want to shut us down. Listen, I'll move to another country to fight you people. I'm not giving up. Like I that's the only way I'll leave the U.S. is if they shut us down here, I'm going to have to leave. And then I guess beam in off ships with, with FM or something. I, I, Let's fight now so they don't get to this point, man. This is serious. This is damn serious. Let's continue here. This is the producer's office. Most folks are gone now. I want to get a, a nighttime crew hired so we can go, you know, 18 hours a day, not just, you know, 14 hours a day, and not just exhaust 
<laughs> the limited crew we've got. But that's what this comes down to. Let's continue on here. Let's go talk to David Knight, and then we're going to shut this down. I think I've got a lot of editing to do. And he's getting ready for the nightly news. 7 o'clock Central, about 45 minutes, Infowars.com. It is subscription, but then we put it out later for everybody free on YouTube and other platforms. But the subscribers pay for the bandwidth and a lot of the infrastructure. And I tell them, you know, it's like, well, why should I subscribe if it's given out free? Well, that's to help other people. This is to donate to the war effort. This is what you've done, and I commend you, and I thank you. Well, we've got it running right now where it's like 80% off the normal price. 20 people can use each membership. It's like 20 bucks a year. It's like 5 dollars a month if you don't get it yearly. PrisonPlanet.tv. We need your support, folks. And then look, while he's in there doing the news, there, there we were live with another host. We're adding more hours. John Rappaport was on today. Really a great mind. Breaking down so much. This is what we're doing, a true multimedia center to fight the global. So no more fake news.com. That was the name of his URL 15 years ago, fighting the mainstream media fake news. He used to work for mainstream. Oh, but they just invented the word fake news. Oh, no, and they say we're that. It's good to be shut down. They're not censoring. They're only shutting down fake news. Well, then sue us in court and prove it. No, they can't deal with us. They can't counter us. Let's go ahead and go talk to the crew. No, they're just people like us standing up in front of cameras just like us at the White House to look official and to have authority and then to spew lies. We're countering all of that now. That's just the establishment. We're just as good or better than they are. We're allowed to exist. They say, no, 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 we're fake. We're fake. Don't watch InfoWars. You know, yesterday, Alex, they, they were showing scenes from uh, Syria and... Uh, they were saying, oh, the Syrian troops are killing people. They're killing people, which was a total lie. I know. They were, they were actually, the Syrian troops were helping the people, helping people get out of, the, out of Aleppo. Well, I mean, it's a war against Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Yeah. Kid, how you doing? Good. How are you all doing? Kid Daniels works super hard. One of the hardest workers around here. Look, we have weird flags from the start of our country. We're such evil weirdos. We like, love our country and know about its history. I want to apologize for that. I'm sorry. That's, that's evil. Let's go in here. The crew don't even know I'm live right now. David. Yeah. Leanne. Oh, I love this uh, screensaver, huh? <laughs> what do you guys make of this? Uh, I, we told everybody they were coming out with fake news, and they said, oh, you're crazy. We're not going to censor you. Now it's starting. And it's yeah. being done incrementally with a new test on Facebook. Well, they've been moving up to this for a long time. Like I said uh, last night, they created this, uh, this bill that they now put into the NDA. That was created uh, this summer. So it was when they thought that Hillary Clinton was going to win. And then we go back uh, like three years later, and it was uh, earlier, and, and we had them moving. Uh, Legalizing fake away. news. Yeah. Now they're well, funding it. And the answer, the Trump card, is Trump's got to come out against this. Yeah, they're going to remove the smith Munt Act. But then he has we to come out against it, but he's got to really come out against it. We need to get over here and talk to us. But then, Alex, we, we, we've got them saying that uh, Roger Stone uh, was the one who whispered into Trump's ear that Vladimir Putin was actually doing this. This just came out yesterday. That they said, well, Vladimir Putin was the one who orchestrated all this based on nothing but uh, circumstantial evidence. And at the same time, we've had yet another person, uh, a former British ambassador, not the British ambassador who said, I met with people who said they released this information, but a guy who's now affiliated with uh, WikiLeaks, who was the British ambassador to Uzbekistan. And he said, I flew to America, I met with someone clandestinely in the park, and they handed me these emails for the DNC. What they don't want you to do is to pay attention to the fact that these emails were true. They say that the Russians hacked the election. They're not saying that they sent in uh, fake voters. They're not saying they took over voting machines. And it They're was China they... and, and, and it was Saudi Arabia that bragged they were manipulating our election. But yeah. that was okay. Let me say one more thing. I'm going to go finish with titles. Let you guys spend a few minutes talking to folks. But I want to do a test right now. This will get about 100,000 views, okay? Because people, it's Christmas, they've gone to sleep, not a million. If all of you share this on your Facebook page and also email friends this link, let's go for another 10 minutes. Let's see it go from claiming there's 3,000 watching right now. And let's see it go to 6,000, 10,000, 20,000. It's up to you as a test against censorship to say we're against this. We're not going along with it. And I was just telling my inside scoops from Fox about the ongoing purge there. We saw that as a bellwether. It's now come out. Uh, you know, that all this was happening. I mean, this is such an incredible time. Share this link now, folks, because 
Again, they got part of their coup done, but they didn't get Trump out. That's why they're so panicking. They had an authoritarian takeover plan in their own admission, Chinese-style model of censorship, right. but it didn't work. Leanne right. and then David. They've been really yeah. working on this for years, gearing up for this, which is why I think it's so incredible. Matt Drudge thought this was so important that he came here to the office. He didn't let anyone know he was coming. He had we to get keep his mentioning that because we out. keep mentioning. Uh, it's I agree. I'm gonna shut up a minute. It's so <laughs> epic that this recluse that no one he right. talks to no one came here, met with the Supreme Court justice. We have the same intel. It said it starts at the end of next year. Right. We're here. We had intel. It's real. I got CIA assets. Everything else I can freaking talk. I mean, everybody knows that I can talk to the head of the country. This crap's going on, folks. This is real. Go, sorry. Go ahead. And it's just so incredible that they're doubling down because they lost. Let me, let me finish what I was about to say before. And that is, when they tell you that the Russians hacked the election, they're not saying they sent in Russian agents as voters, they're not saying they took over the voting machines, they're not saying that they took over uh, the, the central totaling of the machines. They're saying that they, they hacked our election by telling the truth about Hillary Clinton and the conspiracies that were going on in the DNC and how they were colluding to subvert this and, and what a criminal she was. So that's right. what is really behind this. Think about that. And think about the fact that they are holding this out there saying the Russians hacked the election. It's all the same people that were colluding with Hillary Clinton, that were rigging the DNC, are now telling you this so they can distract you from the content. From their criminality. They never denied that what we learned about Hillary was true. They're just saying right. that because we found out she was a crook and a thief and that so was the DNC, that that hacked our election. No. Right. It let people know what was going on. So whoever did it, whether it was WikiLeaks, and I don't care if it was Vladimir and Putin. I don't think it was. I think it's an absurd narrative. But even if it was, thank you, whoever put that information out there, because we found out the truth about Hillary Clinton, and now we found out the very people that were lying to us are the ones who are telling us it's the Russians and this and that, you know, just as a red herring. That's all it is. That, that's well, and they don't really get to the bottom of, you know, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. That's the big big to-do out there that they were trying to say that she won the popular vote, so we should just let her win. So how did the Russians sway the election in favor of Donald Trump, you know, if she got more votes, allegedly, yeah. you know, if you believe that vote count? But Well, of course, also the, the margin that she has is pretty much the margin that she had nationally was the margin she had in California. Right. And, and that's the whole reason why we have the Electoral College. It's a firewall against one or two states and Free one or two cities. Under attack. Free speech is under attack. Imperial troops have entered the base. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I mean, I just think it's it's really incredible that they are really going with this Russian hacking narrative. And again, it was not a hack. These were emails that were leaked to WikiLeaks. And and like uh, David brought up, the ambassador said, I was handed these. He was probably given a, a card with all this information on it and saying that it was a disgruntled Bernie supporter who was sick and tired, sick to his stomach, seeing what was actually going on behind the scenes and just the level of, of criminality that they were going through in all levels of government and the media to get their, their agent in place. And we knew that they weren't going to stop. Yeah. We knew if, if Trump actually won, the globalists weren't going to take this thing lying down. But who knew that they were going to really ramp up the efforts to shut every dissenting opinion down? If you go beyond the headlines of what they're telling you when they say uh, Putin did all of this stuff, what they're saying is, well, we, it's just our latest intelligence assessment because we know that's the kind of person he is. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, listen, we have just as much evidence then that Hillary Clinton murdered Seth Rich because we got a lot of circumstantial evidence that shows that he was beaten, that he was shot in the back, he wasn't robbed, he was a DNC staffer who was part of their, he was a data analyst for them. A lot of circumstantial evidence, and we know what kind of a person Hillary Clinton is because of the <laughs> intel that we got yeah. from the DNC. So you know what, we got just as much evidence that Hillary Clinton murdered Seth Rich, who we also have circumstantial evidence that he was a leaker. So whatever. I mean, right. that's the way these people are going. But of course, you're not allowed to question their narrative because this is coming from the government. See, right. anything that Trust you the question government. the government's narrative, it's a conspiracy theory. That's the way it's been since the JFK. Well, assassin. and just to, to, you kind of touched on a point there with Hillary Clinton and uh, the Clinton body count. That was the story uh, Kit Daniels, I think, maybe even wrote about how uh, Google was switching their algorithm, so if anyone tried to search for Clinton body count or any of her, her scandals, the algorithm would only bring to the top 
some arbitrary thing that yeah. nobody would even search for and they were shifting everything in her favor and that's what we have to look forward to with these new fake news filters. They're going to completely filter out the information that you have access you know, to. I, keep, I walked in here earlier and I, he kept saying Russian hacking narrative. He said the word narrative several times. A couple of weeks, it was about a week after the election, the Daily Beast started an article about how InfoWars and Breitbart is now the establishment media. And I kind of got a <laughs> chuckle out of it because now I did this report today on how Fox News, I found a Fox News poll where they asked like a thousand Americans what they thought about the Russian hacking thing. 59% said they didn't believe it. They don't think hey. that Russian hackers or cyber attacks had any influence on the election. I was like, well, okay, this is a Fox News poll. I mean, most of these are Trump supporters, okay? But then I got looking at the uh, poll itself. A lot of these people were neoconservatives. They were like, we don't, we don't believe Trump's going to build a wall. You know, we don't believe in this, this X, Y, and Z and Trump proposals. And 67% of them said they had somewhat good confidence in the CIA. Mm -hmm. So basically, it was a really damning poll because you have these neoconservatives, for the most part, that are saying that they don't trust the, they don't trust this uh, conspiracy theory being put out by the mainstream media that you know the Russian hackers took over our election, but they say they still somewhat trust the CIA, even though there's rogue elements in the CIA that were pushing this conspiracy right. theory. And they you know, refuse to go before Congress and present their evidence, and that's why the Congress yeah. that's in, in charge so, of this yeah. is saying, well, bring us so the evidence. It goes back to what I was saying about the Daily Beast. It's like, for the most part, we're now the establishment media, mm -hmm. and then you got CNN. Keith Olbermann's the resistance. Yeah, yeah and you got <laughs> CNN and all these other groups that are pushing straight up conspiracy theories. He's the metrosexual uh, Alex Jones. Look at this. <laughs> In, uh, in France, they did a poll. They asked people uh, if they believed the media in France in a Twitter poll. 91% of them said no. Oh. Uh, they said the, the mainstream media is like a prostitute, which reminds me of what Gerald Salenti always used to call them the prostitute Pres media, right? Yeah. They get it in France as well. We, we know this is happening everywhere. Look, the thing that really concerns me about this Facebook thing is it looks very much like the fairness doctrine. And remember, that was what the, uh, the thing that they had um, that, that was broken through by Rush Limbaugh, primarily with talk radio. Uh, that was where they would come in and say, well, we're going to have uh, our view always put out there. We're going to uh, uh, not allow a conservative view is really what it amounted to. By saying we're going to have fair and equal access time, what they did was really shut down any real discussion of issues. And they tried to bring that down to shut down conservative uh, media after that was deleted by uh, Ronald Reagan. He got rid of the fairness doctrine that freed up discussion uh, on the airwaves and they tried to bring that back. This is precisely what Facebook is now doing. They're not doing it by government mandate yet, but they're going to do it with Facebook. And while there was also an article today on Wired Magazine talking about what a wonderful thing it was that companies were boycotting Breitbart. And they said if we can get the tech companies to boycott Breitbart, we'll have them. They can have all their free speech, but we're not going to let them get any money. We will starve them to death, and we will do it with a boycott. We will do it with Facebook. That's what's really uh, happening right now. What's scary, David, is Facebook and Twitter, especially Facebook, people say, well, if, you know, it's a private company. They can say what they, they can censor how much they want. And I agree with that to an extent. The problem is, though, that Facebook was funded by CIA uh, right. venture fund money. They had all these connections with Facebook and the intelligence community. I'm sure that you can say the same thing about Twitter. So basically, you got this pretty much a government front group, in, as far as Facebook is concerned, that's now censoring what people can say or believe. They know everything about you, but they're going to let you know how you need to think. And they're controlling, that's their 2030 agenda, is to even have our thoughts and dreams be under their control. Yeah, so look at this. this was an article, sorry, this was an article tweeted out uh, by WikiLeaks earlier reminding everyone that the Washington Post has a $600 million CIA contract after Jeff Bezos uh, took over. $600 million CIA contract. Uh, Bezos actually allows him to use his uh, his network for their software computing, the CIA. So, I mean, we're infiltrated, folks. This is serious. The cozy relationship between tech industry and the CIA. Now, here's Wired Magazine. It used to be a good source of uh, tech information. They have totally gone off the rails for the government. Facebook finally gets real about fighting fake news, is what they're saying, okay? O applauding that. And here's another one that I pulled up on another tab. Also, 
from uh, Wired Magazine. Meet the ad companies ditching Breitbart and fake news. And they say, uh, uh, this is the way we can take down uh, the alternative media. Okay, absolutely. You notice most of the people ditching are like crap products, yeah. poison food. Gilo, yeah. Gilo, yeah. Horrible. Yeah. That's right. Stuff you don't need thing. anyway. You know, this, is, this is, goes right back to the Saul Alinsky tactics of send, if their company policy is to respond to every letter, you send them 30,000 letters. And so this is what they're doing. They're mobilizing their troops to bombard these companies and say, how dare you go to these? So you need to do the exact opposite uh, on, on our side and go to sites like Salon and take a picture of the fact that there's an advertisement right next to an article trying to normalize pedophilia and ask that company, why, why are you advertising on Salon um, and advocating pedophilia? Are you okay with pedophilia? So you'd need to take that step, to take the screenshot, and you could even just at them on Twitter. A lot of uh, brands now respond immediately to people's Twitter uh, posts. So it could be something super simple. You don't have to go out of your way to write a letter, but we need to fight back as well. And then, of course, continue to support Breitbart and other alternative uh, sites out there. And the way they're doing that is, of course, with an anonymous Twitter account, mm. uh, which we don't know who's behind that. I mean, it could be the DNC, CIA for example. It could, yeah, it could be the CIA. It could be the, <laughs> D, the Democrats. Uh, they're, they're out there organizing a boycott. I mean, it could even be Washington Post and New York Times because so they're like getting that, killed by Breitbart. Like that proper not. Remember that? That was anonymous, too, that the yeah. Washington Post did an article yeah, that's claiming right. that this is a, a source of the fake news that you need to avoid. Is right. it propaganda they finally had not, to, Yeah, and they finally had to back not. off of that report. Yeah. Because, I acknowledge it was just some arbitrary yeah. uh, collated not only file was it some teacher left About to create a bunch of lawsuits, but it was just shoddy journalism. Well, think about the itself. connection. Just like they've got sleeping giants here, this anonymous Twitter account, you got prop or not, and then you got Snopes, and what do they do? In each one of these cases, they create this uh, uh, th this shill out there that now becomes the final arbiter of whether this is true or not, or becomes their agent, their instrument yeah. to do to accomplish well, this. Well, I saw someone yeah. on on Twitter uh, actually say that people need to start bombarding Snopes with all sorts of articles on the DNC and all these WikiLeaks that have come out and just bombard them with stories that are attacking uh, these these groups that are trying to say, you know, Trump is being backed by the Russians. Bombard them with the WikiLeaks articles. Make them fact check the, the information that is there. Make them do their job of being Snopes, the fact checker. And, and the lady admits that she's left-leaning, she loves her cats, and, you know, they're going to censor the news and sway it in their favor. Right. They're Here's not, the problem with Snopes. They're just a regular and couple. In fact, they're partisan, exactly. me, partisan journalism masquerading as objective news. Right. I, I, honestly, I like partisan journalism. I think a lot of, because people in general can never be obje yeah, as long objective. As they say it. But the problem like, is, no, is when they're not. pretending to be objective. That's the problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah, when I was on my way into work this morning, I'm, I'm flipping through, scanning the channels as usually, and I hear Alex's voice. I said, wait a minute, he's not on the radio yet. And it was, so I hang through there, and it was obviously a hit piece that they'd spliced together. It was Glenn Beck. And what was he doing? He was uh, putting Alex <laughs> Jones out there, and, and the bottom line after he ran his hit piece was, there you see, the guy who tells us that they're putting baby parts in Pepsi tells us that we don't have to worry about the Russians. You know, <laughs> So worry about the baby parts in Pepsi, yuck, 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 but not about the Russians. Well, you know what? They really did use baby parts to test uh, to do taste testing. No, they're not in the Pepsi gland. And uh, even Snopes said that, but they put it in as undetermined, even though there's documentation and Snopes admitted that there's documentation that the company that Pepsi hired used aborted fetuses to taste uh, you know, their, their cells to see if they would react. Uh, they, they don't know that uh, they're obviously dead. They don't know about taste, but they're looking at the cells as research. So they're using aborted baby fetuses to test the ingredients that they were putting in to sweeten it, to see, to test them for reaction. And so yes, that is true. And it is not undetermined as Snopes likes to characterize it, even though they admit, yes, they really are doing this. And nobody said they were putting it in the Pepsi itself that you drink. It was part of the testing process. We don't like baby parts being harvested for testing or for other purposes. And of course, there's a, an ongoing thing going on with that right now in the state of Texas. But that's how they will spend stuff. That's how they will misrepresent stuff using Snopes and using Glenn Beck and using all these other phony media sources. Glenn I mean, Beck's just had an example of that today. Himself. Glenn Beck's already outed yeah. himself. I mean, I've been saying all along that he saw 
his opportunity to go be the face of the Tea Party after uh, they made sure that Ron Paul was no longer an issue. Then he says, well, I'm going to move over here. And then now that those people have rejected him and all of his failed uh, prophecies, of course, about the presidency. Yeah. So now he's going back to, to try to say, okay, guys, come on back. I'll, I'll throw everybody else under the bus. I'll be on your team. I'll grovel at Zuckerberg's feet. So, I mean, we know what we're getting with him. So What was funny was, <laughs> I can say this, as soon as he finished his little shtick uh, attacking Alex, he immediately goes to a commercial for identity theft. <laughs> and as we've seen <laughs> over and over again, Rolling Stones documented it. We had an entry into our film contest where somebody showed clip after clip after clip where Alex would say it, and six months later, a year later, Glenn Beck would imitate it. Verbatim. Glenn Beck moved to Texas as as close to being Alex Jones as he can. I mean, he's talking about a, a, a identity <laughs> theft, that's Glenn Beck right there. It sums it up. But, you know, if we want to make Glenn Beck look bad, what we do is we go back and we get some clips of him talking about how Ted Cruz is the new messiah for America. But God you know what? Him. We got other fish to fry. He has so, a direct line to yeah. God, and he got, got <laughs> it all a, His wrong. dad had a direct line to Leah Harvey Oswald. We know that much. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, everybody go ahead and take advantage of our 2016 Christmas sale. We are having store-wide free shipping, 33% off Brain Force. Um, we have so many things right now. Make excellent Christmas pre presents, excellent stocking stuffers. Brain Force Plus is only $20 now. Super Male Vitality, $44.96. So things are like 30% off, 50% off. Just go through. We got the new Super Blue Fluoride Free Toothpaste here. Let me click on that because I have been using it. And it's it's got xylitol, peppermint, uh, tea tree oil, and all sorts of things that are really great for your teeth. And they focus on the bacteria that would get in. And I don't know why it's not opening, but it's, it's the bacteria that would get there uh, in your gums, which a lot of people don't realize, goes straight to your heart. And that's why a lot of people have that plaque buildup that, that comes from your teeth and having uh, issues there with your gums. So go ahead and pick that up. It's only $9.95 right now. Alex is brilliant for saying, why are we carrying non-fluoride toothpaste? It took him years to come up with this um, formulation here, of course. So everything is store-wide free shipping now is the time to get those really heavy heavy items that you've been wanting but of course tons of stocking stuffers uh, Owen Schroyer says he likes the flags and the hats and t-shirts to send to his family and friends everybody loves it so get yours today it supports this operation share this video and thank you guys so much for tuning into this broadcast uh, we are just a few minutes away from the Infowars nightly news it's gonna be going live at 7 p.m. Central and Owen Schroyer will be your host